Hello everyone and welcome back. I'm so sorry it's taken me a little while to get this finished. Had some things pop up including three birthdays so I'm a little bit behind but today we are going to go ahead and finish off this little nature page in Small Victories by Johanna Basford and I'm going to be using my Derwent drawing pencils again. So this little fox is going to get some colors today and I want to do like fairly standard natural fox colors in a nice warm oranges and reds and a bit of brown tones and I'm hoping we can make it look really nice so the little leaves and things that's on the fox I'll make them so that they look sort of like they're part of the actual fur but you'll still be able to see that there are leaves there but I want it to look nice and cohesive and make sense in this picture so on the body I'll be using like the autumn colors and then on the chest there I'll be using the gray tones I think so let's get started So now that I've marked out a few little shadowy areas, I'm going to go in with this Mars orange and I think it's going to be a nice one. I want to do like the use the oranges and reds in this one, but I want to yellow it up a little bit as well. So I'm going to go in with some yellow ochre as well in some of the lighter areas just to sort of make it a really nice and vibrant fox. So I want to just get him nice and red so I'm just gonna go over the top of my shadows and then blend it out making sure that I leave the chest area nice and white and uh, that we also have the areas on the face it's gonna be nice and white as well so where they have that line underneath his eye um, I'm going to be using a sort of the bottom part of that line so it sort of curves around and goes down so it's sort of the one actually the one over his mouth really that's going to be where my little border goes between the white area and the sort of a reddish orangey kind of area on his face
I'm just going to mark out a little bit of shadow areas on the little white tip on his tail here. So I'm going in with a warm grey. I might end up having to go in a bit later, sort of probably towards the end of this video with maybe a little bit of black if we need to make some deeper shadows. But I might be able to just layer it with this one as well, just because obviously with the Derwent drawing set, it's only a set of 24. So there is a limited amount of colors to use. So you go in, just go in light and then build up. So if I need to bring in my black, I'm going going to go in very, very light later on, just to make sure I don't go overboard because they're harder to take away these colors just because they, they're very nice and soft so they do lay down a lot of pigment if you're not careful. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I was looking at sort of fox photos, because I did do that before coloring this fox in, was that, especially in the white areas, it almost looked like there was a bit of a darker undercoat. So that it was, what I could see was like down the very base it was some darker quite darker areas so I want to make sure that especially on the chest that I get those dark areas in so I'm just going to start now just gently with my gray and then I might add in as I mentioned before just some black layers a bit later on when I've got the rest of the fox kind of done I you guys know me I tend to I don't just stick to one small spot on my picture. I kind of do the whole thing layer by layer. So I kind of build up the colors on the whole thing and then I go in and do another layer. So, which is probably a bit different than what you would do if you were doing say, um, like the pastel, like the pit pastel pencils and those sort of things, because you don't want to keep rubbing over what you've already done because you're going to smush it out but especially with this little tiny drawing here I can definitely get away with it so I'm going to build up color on the whole fox layer by layer by layer
So now that I've marked out a lot of my darker areas, I want to go in with this yellow ochre and layer it over the top just because I just want to really sort of orange things up a little bit. So by bringing this one over the top of my sort of terracotta, sanguine, all of those sort of colors, I'll get that nice warm glow in this fur. And I think it's going to look really nice. And that's one of the advantages that I really think by having a set of 24 is that you need to get comfortable with blending out your colors the way you want because you're not going to find an exact match. You're going to have to blend and layer things until you're happy. And that's how you're going to get that depth. Like obviously with my polychromos, if I'm using those, I can often find a shade that's relatively similar to probably what I would like, but I can't do that with with this one. So I need to definitely get more comfortable uh, comfortable with mixing out my own colors and uh, layering that way. So obviously when I lay with my polychromos, I do it because I get that shine with and a play with different colors shining through each other. But this is more, I'm literally layering and blending to create a certain color more so than what I do with my polychromos. It's different than what I'm used to and I'm loving getting to know these pencils more really through this whole page really. It's been a really, really good learning curve and I'm so happy with these pencils. I really am. I can't recommend them enough.
I'm just going to bring out this brown ochre just for down the leg here. Um, what I could see on all of the different photos I was looking at of foxes is that their legs kind of go into this sort of grayish brownish kind of tone. So I don't want that to be that sort of red orange kind of color. So I'm just going to mix in my greys and my brown ochre and get those sort of colors in that way. Now I want to use this sort of ruby earth down the bottom here because it's a nice dark rich color. It's beautiful. I really love this. It almost reminds me of a uh, little bit like the Outback Australia kind of colors and like this old fox kind of does with this sort of red earth. So, but it's a really good one to use in these sort of dark areas where I want a bit of shadow, but at the same time, I want a bit of color in there as well. So it lays really well on top of that chocolate color. All right, it's time to get serious with some shadows and add in that ivory black. Now, I've raved about this one before. It is a seriously fantastic shade of black. It is a good one. Even if you were working with other pencils, you guys know, if you followed me for a while, you know that I love my Derwent Drawing Chinese White and the ivory black is another one that I really like and definitely works really well together with other pencils so if you only buy two colors of the uh, Derwent drawing set get yourself the Chinese white and the ivory black they are absolutely awesome colors to use with any of your other sets I want to build up a little bit more of these areas on the face um, again I'm going back to what I mentioned looking at reference photos I saw some really nice sort of fox faces that had some beautiful dark areas on the nose and under the eye so I really want to make sure that I bring that in and and get that depth of color and, and everything in this little fox so I get it looking even though he's got leaves and things all over him I want to make sure he looks at least a little bit realistic I don't know why I keep calling it him but maybe it's because of fantastic Mr. Fox I have no idea but in my head all foxes are male <laughs>
I'm bringing in a little bit more of the yellow ochre and this time I'm pressing I'm not completely burnishing here but I'm probably going to like a medium pressure so I'm starting to blend things out a little bit more here so I'm not just layering it down gently I am starting to give it a bit of a blend and smush some colors together here and get that really sort of yellowy or ochre glow on top. So I mentioned earlier that some of the foxes that I saw had this sort of really dark, almost like an undercoat. So I thought I'd bring that in in these little leaves here by having the leaves in like a grey gray sort of white but with that black just at the top here. You know when they have those tufts of fur? I kind of want the inner parts of those tufts to be these sort of leaves. And make it nice and dark sort of here and there and that will give us a little bit of a little bit more depth and something give us something to play with so it's not just white so now I can sort of go in in the white areas with my Chinese white blend things out a little bit but we'll still as you can see it's pulling out that black which is exactly what I want I just want to give it that little bit of a depth there and it's similar to what I could see on my reference photos that I've sort of been looking at so I'm not completely using a reference photo I've just taken inspiration from a lot of different photos just to have something to go by I'm just going to darken up that mouth a little bit, bit again because I've seen that they <laughs> they kind of foxes look like they have a little bit of black lipstick on which is a bit cute so they got a pretty distinct blackness on on their mouth there so I'm just gonna make that a little bit clearer on this picture so a bit more of the yellow ochre I'm going to do these little center leaves here just a little bit more yellow so I want the yellow to be the proper on undertone here just so it doesn't go completely in doesn't blend in completely with the fur but um, at the same time I'm gonna layer in some of the other colors as well so I can go in I'll do I'll sort of just extend out this line here with the Venetian red and then we're gonna blend that out with my Caran d'Ache blender pen a bit later Sorry, that was not a blender pen, as a blender pencil I've got.
I'm just going to bring in my trusty Sakura jelly roll and I'm using the 08 which is the smallest that I've got working at the moment. I'd probably be more inclined to go with a 05 at least for the lines that I'm going to use but maybe here in the ears and things I'll, I'm fine with the 08. Um, I actually had a question um, a couple of videos ago, I think. Someone was asking me about how, how I layered down this jelly roll when I go over the lines. And it's probably more so when I'm using these slightly thicker nibs. Um, but you will see that I'm kind of layering it down as if I'm drawing like little strands of fur. So I'm barely touching the paper. I'm doing small little strokes. I'm not layering everything down in one sort of thick line. I'm sort of just gently, gently tickling the paper. And it's just because I prefer to tone down the lines rather than layering down a thick white line instead. So by doing it that way, I feel like I got a little bit more control of how much of this I put down onto the paper. Um, you can still kind of see the, the line there, but it's definitely toned down and not so prominent.
so as you can see I'm just building up lots of shadows dark areas here it's things are overlapping they are in underneath they are in areas where I would expect there to be shadows so I want them really dark compared to sort of our highlighted areas of the fox so I'm just making sure that I'm getting enough pigment down on the paper here as well as blending out so sort of they're really dark like my chocolate color there that's in the bottom here so I just want to make sure that we don't have too much white tooth um, showing through now I want to just blend this with my white first and then I'm going to layer some other colors on top afterwards but if you look at that so you can see it's it's more so the top part there that I am the highlighted part that I am sort of pulling out with my white but I don't know why I don't I just didn't feel like using the um, the light sienna on this one I just wanted a little bit more I don't know less color <laughs> I'm not sure why I wanted to use the white but I did so I just kind of wanted the same color but toned down a little bit more so that's why I chose to go with that one and then we can add in colors on top of it after anyway I'm just going to go back in with my terracotta, darken up a couple of areas here, um, especially 
because you can still see that sort of little drawn in mask I want to tone down that line a little bit by just going over it with the terracotta and kind of blending it out a little bit more towards the eye and that way that black line isn't as visible I didn't want to go over it with my white because I felt like it would stand out even more by doing that so I thought I'll just darken it up a little bit instead and just use use those dark colors that I already got and then blend them in a little bit So I'm just going to go over, especially the middle part here where I didn't push down as hard with the yellow. I kind of just did that um, at the top part before. So I just want to go over with my blender pencil and just mush it out a little bit. Go over those white, that white tooth, make sure that's not as visible, make sure that everything kind of makes sense on this little fox and um, yeah so I'm just sort of going over all my areas reducing you can see how much more since I go over it the um, the color kind of brightens up even more which is really good that's one of the ways you can save a lot of time with your coloring is by using a blending medium of some sort so whether that is a pencil a pen um, some sort of liquid like a uh, odorless mineral spirit or something like that um, that will save definitely save you a bit of time on a picture that's tiny like this a pencil or a pen is probably your best bet I think anything that needs to be put down with a paintbrush I feel it's going to be a little bit too fiddly with something this small but this pen works really really well so uh, yeah I'm just going to add in a little bit of a shadow just underneath the fox here um, I just want to make sure that you know it actually looks like it's sitting on something that there is a bit of a an area underneath him and uh, once I've done that then I reckon we are pretty much finished I'm very happy with how this fox has turned out it's kind of ended up being another sort of one hour challenge although for me this was broken down in a couple of shorter sittings I was running out of time this week it's been one of those one of those weeks but I'm hoping things will get back to normal soon and uh, school sports and things and all of that take up a lot of time and I just need to get back into the routine of things of being back at school.
all right I do think that's enough of a shadow so let's just do a quick little zoom out here and we've got our fox all finished I think we worked in those leaves really well by having him in the little autumn tones and uh, yeah I'm very happy with how this little fox turned out I think he's really cute maybe he's gonna go out hunting as long as he's not getting hunted himself and there is our finished picture I'm really really happy with how the Derwent drawing pencils did for this page I love those muted natural tones it is really really pretty so I thank you so much for following along with me on this page I wish you all a colorful day and I will see you again next time